Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer, Tuesday evening. And so let us pray as we give God thanks for bringing us to the end of another day. And to thank him for his grace and his mercy in sustaining us through this day. And to to cast all our cares on him because he cares for us. Let's pray. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. And our canticle is from Revelation chapter 21. I saw the holy city coming down out of heaven from God. I saw a new Jerusalem. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more. For the former things have passed away. And the one who sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Amen. I saw the holy city coming down out of heaven from God. Open my eyes, O Lord that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. And I'll collect this evening. The prayer for this evening. Abide with us, Lord, for it is evening and day is drawing to a close. Abide with us and with your whole church in the evening of the day, in the evening of life, in the evening of the world, abide with us and with all your faithful ones, O Lord, in time and in eternity. Amen. 
All right, our psalm this evening is Psalm 74. Psalm 74. Arise, O God, maintain your own cause. O God, why have you utterly disowned us? Why does your anger burn against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your congregation that you purchased of old, the tribe you redeemed for your own possession, and Mount Zion where you dwelt. Hasten your steps towards the endless ruins where the enemy has laid waste all your sanctuary. Your adversaries roared in the place of your worship. They set up their banners as tokens of victory. Like men brandishing axes on high in a thicket of trees, all her carved work they smashed down with hatchet and hammer. They set fire to your holy place. They defiled the dwelling place of your name. They raised it to the ground. They said in their heart, let us make havoc of them all together. And they burned down all the sanctuaries of God in the land. There are no signs to see, not one prophet left, not one among us who knows how long. How long, O oh God, will the adversary scoff? Shall the enemy blaspheme your name forever? Why have you withheld your hand and hidden your right hand in your bosom? Yet God is my King from of old, who did deeds of salvation in the midst of the earth, it was you that divided the sea by your might and shattered the heads of the dragons on the waters. You alone crushed the heads of Leviathan and gave him to the beasts of the desert for food. You cleft the rock for fountain and flood. You dried up ever flowing rivers. Yours is the day yours also the night you established the moon and the sun you set all the bounds of the earth you fashioned both summer and winter remember now lord how the enemy scoff how a foolish people despised your name do not give to wild beasts the soul of your turtle dove Forget not the lives of your poor forever. Look upon your creation, for the earth is full of darkness, full of the haunts of violence. Let not the oppressed turn away ashamed, but let the poor and needy praise your name. Arise, O God, maintain your own cause. Remember how fools revile you all the day long. Forget not the clamor of your adversaries, the tumult of your enemies that ascends continually. Arise, O God, and maintain your cause. Rede and the prayer, redeeming God, renew your broken people with your Holy Spirit that they may walk your narrow way and greet your coming dawn found in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. This clearly is a psalm about the destruction of the temple. Let's read the meditation that goes with it.
This psalm is a community lament. Have you ever suffered with others through something terrible? An unexpected death in the family? A betrayal by church leadership? A natural disaster? God's people at the time of this psalm has just endured the destruction of the very heart and center of their life together, the temple. They set your sanctuary on fire. They profaned the dwelling place of your name. Verse 7. The psalmist cries out to God for, for, for God's deliverance throughout this psalm. Remembering God's covenant promises and deliverance in the past. You and I read this psalm today with deeper insight into the ways of God than was possible for God's people at the time of Asaph, who wrote this psalm. For we see that the greatest destruction directed towards God's people came not upon the people as a whole, but upon a representative Israelite. In the fullness of time, the temple was again built but it was again destroyed. But the, the temple that was destroyed was not the temple made by human hands, but the true and final temple, the temple of the body of Jesus Christ, in which God's presence was most clearly displayed. And why? Why was God's temple destroyed? Was this final temple destroyed at the whim of an invading army? No. It was the preordained plan of God set in motion from time immemorial so that the hosts of heaven and hell would stand and wonder at the glory of the love of God. So in the destruction of Jesus, your own destruction is assured to be behind you instead of in front of you. When you look at the cross, you see your punishment being carried out so that before you is only peace with God and an eternity with him. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's a lament psalm, a psalm lamenting the destruction of the temple and as the writer points out it looks forward to the final temple who is Jesus himself who was destroyed in order for the people for us to have life and live amen okay so that's the psalm and let's move now to our New Testament reading, which is Mark chapter, chapter 3, Mark chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 7 to 19, 7 to 19. Mark chapter 3, yep, Mark 3, 7 to 19. All right, so Mark chapter 3. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the lake, and a large crowd from Galilee followed. When they heard all he was doing, many people came to him from Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea and the regions across the Jordan and around Tyre and Sidon. Because of the crowd, he told his disciples to have he told his disciples to have a small boat ready for him to keep the people from crowding him. For he had healed many, so that those with the diseases were pushing forward to touch him. Whenever the impure spirits uh, saw him 
they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. But he gave them strict orders not to tell others about him. Jesus, <coughs> 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 Jesus went up on the mountainside and called to him those he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve, twelve that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. These are the twelve he appointed. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. To them he gave the name Boanerges, which means sons of thunder. Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, uh, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Okay, so we'll leave that there. That's verse 19. Yep. All right, so what we have in this, we, we have first Jesus is the crowds following Jesus. It's like Jesus is a celebrity in his day, isn't it? Um, wherever he went, crowds, people hear about him and they, they join the crowd to, to, to hear his teaching, to follow him, to, to, to have him heal them, and so on. And it's important, I think, sisters and brothers, to reflect on that for a moment, just to, to reflect on this idea of the crowds following Jesus. Because on the one hand, many of these people, Jesus himself said it in another place, that many of these people were following him primarily because of what they can get from him. They weren't following him because they love him, they weren't following him because they desired to follow him. They were following him because they wanted to see what they can get. And may I say that there are many who, today who follow Jesus because of what they can get from him. How can, I, how can he meet my needs? Um, I'm not following Jesus um, in order to, to get more of Jesus. I'm not following Jesus because I love him and I, and, and I adore him and I, and I worship him. Uh, there are many today who follow Jesus in order to see how he can meet their needs. What can he do for me? And, and if Jesus doesn't do what they want him to do, they are disappointed and they stop following. They leave the church, they go away, they do whatever. And, and, and that was, that was this, the case in Jesus' day. You know, crowds follow. But these crowds were not, they were not really following Jesus. They wanted something from Jesus. And so they were crowding around him to see what they could get. And yet from the crowd, Jesus appointed 12. And, and again, it tells you something about the fact that, that even within the crowd, um, God will choose from that crowd those whom he desires, those whom he, he wants to follow him. And so the, the Jesus handpicked 12, 12 disciples, but he appointed them apostles that they might preach and that they, and he gave them authority to drive out demons and basically to do what he could do and either this 12 these 12 became the the foundation of the church except for one of course one of them fell away judas iscariot the one who betrayed him but from from the rest the 11 they became the foundation of the church they became the ones um who who went throughout the world 
proclaiming the resurrection of Jesus. Most of them we haven't, we, we don't know much about because they are not in scripture. Um, you know, we don't, we don't know a lot about what they did. We know some from the tradition of the church, from, from church history. We know some, some of them go to other places. For example, we, we know that Thomas went over to India and so on, but we don't know much about the others. And yet we know that Jesus chose them. And even if we don't know what happened to them, God knows what happened to them. They went and did what Jesus commanded them to. To do but the point I'm making is that even within the crowd only a remnant you could say only some are, are truly are handpicked by our Lord and the same is the case today there are many who are following and they are they, they are following because they want something from Jesus they want to see how he's going to do this for them they don't have the authority like the 12 who have this authority but yet in that crowd the grace of god you know god doesn't god god doesn't um say you know you lot uh you know all you want is food all you want is, is what you can get from me so i will just i will leave the rest the, all of you no he says from that group i am going to choose some the grace of God was still very much present in the group to choose 12. Jesus handpicked 12. And, and, and having said that, just to say, the, the Gospels remind us that Jesus had way more than 12 followers. But those are the 12, the special group that he handpicked. Um, by the day of Pentecost, there were 120 in the upper room who were filled with the Holy Spirit on that day. But at this moment, from this crowd, he chose 12. And, and Mark, is, Mark is making the point that even though you have the crowd, there was a select few that were, that were chosen by Jesus. And that's always the case, sisters and brothers. Yeah, don't pay attention to the crowd. It's the select few that, who's, who has a commitment who has the dedication, who to, to the, the, the the surrender, who surrenders their lives for Jesus? Uh, sometimes we are we are dazzled by the crowd. We are we are enamored by the crowd, and 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 we are we are reminded here that it's not the crowd that matters. It's those who are select the select ones who come through and say, uh, who commit their lives surrender their lives totally to jesus they're not there just to see what they can get from you from god they're there to to worship and serve him i pray that we you and i sisters and brothers are among those select few um and not so much part of the big crowd uh, but but part of those who are committed those who are handpicked as it were those who are chosen you know, Jesus said, many are called, but few are chosen. Those few that are chosen to be, to be his, his inner circle, to be his special ones, to be a chosen people, as Peter says, a royal priesthood, uh, a, a, a special possession. Uh, th that's not the crowd. That's that special group. I pray that you and I, sisters and brothers, are among that special group tonight. Let's pray. So Lord, we think about the crowd. We think about the the the, the, the so many people. Sometimes they we we are we are we are um, we envy the crowd. We we are dazzled by the crowd, and yet, Lord, many times you are not in the crowd. It is it is in those few, in the ones you select, those who are truly committed those who have a desire to serve you and worship you, those who are truly uh, consecrated from their hearts towards you. And Lord, we pray that you will grant us grace to be among those whom you have chosen from the, from the larger group. Uh, Lord Jesus, you said in another place that, that the, 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 
the gate to eternal life, the road to eternal life is narrow and only a few find it. But the road to hell, to eternal destruction is, is wide and many travel that road. Uh, Lord, we pray that you'll give us grace to be on that narrow road, uh, to be one of the few who, fought, who find that narrow path, that we will be dedicated and trusting in you alone and not be be, be, be eh, not envy the crowd not be dazzled by the crowd lord in your mercy hear our prayer uh, pray for others this evening on our hearts i do want to pray for our sister dolly dolly's sister baby he, uh, she died um suddenly uh, this week um and we want to pray for her and um pray that god will rest her soul and that she will find peace in the presence of our god and savior jesus christ we pray for her children and her family uh, both in guyana and those here we pray for our sister dolly as she mourns the passing of her sister and we pray for all those who are affected who are affected by her her sudden passing as so the lord hear our prayer for all those who are mourning the death of our sister um, baby Do Dolly's sister in Guyana Lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray for our sister comfort we pray that the Lord will will bring healing and strength to her body uh, we pray that God will hear us we pray for Arthur and Cynthia Veronica's brother and wife in America again we pray that the Lord will bring healing and strength to them Lord in your mercy hear our prayer I'm gonna pray for Sue and the difficulties that she's been having Lord hear our prayer for our sister Sue and Muriel as well we continue to pray O oh God that you'll bring healing and strength in the brokenness of their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Of course, we continue to pray for our sister Angela, who's mourning the passing of her mom. We ask that we pray that her mom will rest in the in the peace and presence of our great. Our, our great God and Savior Jesus Christ and that he will give comfort and peace to Angela and the family as they seek to put her to rest I want to pray also for my friend um, Rona who's who was who also has a death in her family and we pray for that family and that God will again as well grant grace to Rona and the family as they mourn the sudden passing of their family member Lord in your mercy hear our prayer pray for Glynis and Bob in Upminster uh, pray for our sister Doreen and ask for God's mercy upon her pray for uh, Pauline and her mom Daphne and we ask God's grace upon our sister Daphne. May God strengthen her and strengthen her faith despite the, the, the prognosis. And so, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So let's, um, let's pray our, our evening prayer before we say goodnight tonight. <coughs> Merciful God, we entrust to your unfailing and tender care this night those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold us safe. Comfort and heal, uh, comfort and heal them and restore them to health and strength. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace into your hands O lord i commend my spirit 
for you, O oh Lord, for only in you, O oh Lord, can we find hope and refuge. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy upon us sinners. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy upon this sinful world. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord watch over you. May the Lord give you his peace and his comfort and his grace tonight, sisters and brothers, and forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, sisters and brothers.